the system of feminization. That one on the right there, that's actually supposed to be a woman. Yeah. There was a time as a lost man when I would have found that attractive. <laughs> yes, the system of feminization. I want to read to you a quote from this book. The Priest, the Woman, and the Confessional, written by Charles Chinickley, Chinickley or whatever. It is a little dated, but it has to do with the confessional. And right away, some of you, when you think about the Catholic confessional and about how, um, if you were to read this book, I, I recommend you get this book, by the way. I recommend that you get this book. Um, it is done by Chip Publications, you know, Smiley Dave. You can get it online, used, but if you can't find one used, yes, you're going to have to go through um, Smiley Dave to get it. But I do highly recommend this book. Um, it has to do with um, the priest, the woman, and the confessional. And you have to remember that the confessional has been historically used by the Jesuit order to abstract information from people. Because they would say always to, you know, you got to confess everything to a man, which is heresy. Uh, the only one that you confess to is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But that you confess to a man every single thing and the priest would ask questions and whatnot. And it is through the confessional that the Jesuit order got their information. For a great example on that is World War II. Uh, how the confessional played a big part on that in obtaining information. But the premise of this book is about how the priest would delve into the psyche, the mind, the thoughts of the female uh, penitent, penitents or whatever they're called, and um, just, just grotesque. But I want to read a quote out of this. I want to read a quote out of this, um, which is kind of going to set a theme for what we're going to be talking about today. Okay? Now, on this, in this edition of it, this is on page 85, where my two fingers are, this is what I'm going to be sharing with you, okay? Where my two fingers are. See that pen mark? Okay, if you can see that, pause it and read it, okay? Check this out. Quote, can a man be free in his own house so long as there is another who has the legal right to spy all his actions and direct not only every step but every thought of his wife and children? Can that man boast of a home whose wife and children are under the control of another? Is not that unfortunate man really the slave of the ruler and master of his household? And when a whole nation is composed of such husbands and fathers, is it not a nation of abject, degraded slaves? Now, Charles Chinicui is obviously ta talking about in reference to the priest and the confessional. Yes. But in our modern times, can a man be free in his own house? So long as there is another who has the legal right to spy all his actions? Roll that around in your head a little bit as far as modern times is concerned. What other do some allow into their house? Huh? Come on, you know. The enemy on the altar. That will be in the description box, by the way. The enemy on the altar. The doorway to the devils that comes from the enemy on the altar. But not just that. There are other means, like we addressed in the previous video. Okay? Your health phone, music, whatever. Okay? Whatever. When the world is allowed into your home, they're asking for trouble. And it is in one of those, that is one 
means that Satan has used, especially in these modern times, to really destroy, to really destroy this nation of America and many nations. And the question that we need that I, we need to um, consider here is: Can the destruction of nations here in America? What part does woman have in that? Hmm? Now, right away, some of you uh, women are be like, "Oh, you're you're going to be speaking against women." No, hardly, hardly. Also in the description box, there will be a two-part video called The Woman of God, okay? The Woman of God, where we go into this in great detail, in great depth, okay? That was done over a year ago, all right? And because the Lord has given your servant the number of videos that there are on this channel that he has given me, um, some people wouldn't know what to look for, so. <laughs> but in the description box... A two-part video on the woman of God, okay, where we talk about this in great detail, okay. We're going to be kind of skimming over this uh, here a little today. But see, brethren, we need to be aware and we need to see the fruit of Satan's endeavors on the societies of today and what you and I are going to be dealing with as we continue getting closer and closer unto the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Now, there are those sisters, beloved sisters of the Church of the Living God, unto whom this stuff not apply. But also, as with the woman of God, it should be taken as a warning to take heed to yourselves. And you as men, brethren, man, man, also a warning unto us, okay? But see, what Satan has done has wrecked the order. He's wrecked the order. It's God, man, woman, children. Satan has come along and says it's God, woman, children, pet, man. Okay? Like it says in Isaiah, children are your oppressors and women rule over you. Okay? And my people love to have it so. But see, feminism, and see, the, the, whole, the whole thing of feminism, the whole thing of feminism is that it's doomed to fail. It's doomed to fail. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're just going to read one verse here, okay? Uh, actually, we're going to read two verses here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? But verses 3 and 4 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And the falling away is uh, described to us in Second, uh, First John chapter two, verses eighteen on to verse twenty. Okay, uh, they went out from us, but they were not all of us. Okay, saved people do not fall away. Saved people fall, but saved people do not fall away. Those who are not of us trying to worm their way in that and to claim that they are of us, you know, you are because you say you are, those are the ones who fall away. That's what the falling away is, okay? The falling away is not saved people of the Church of the Living God um, getting messed up. No, that is not the falling away. The falling away is after years and years and years, all these so-called Christians are being uh, discovered that they're not saved. They're not of the church of the living God. That's what the falling away is, okay? So that's happening. That's happening. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that 
Are you following me along? And that person of sin, the person of perdition. Wait a minute. Brad? Yeah. 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 Feminism likes to remove like certain things like, you know, the thing in the street, the manhole cover. They want that to be called a personhole cover. He's a jolly good person, right? No. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of per perdition. See, after the redemption of the purchased possession, okay, there is going to come a man, a man, who's going to appear suddenly, unlike what that crazy nitwit um, Mr. Grider wants you to believe. Okay, there's going to come a man from out of nowhere, suddenly burst onto the scene. And all of Catholicism, all the world is going to look to him because he's going to come out of nowhere on the grand stage of the world and say, okay, I'm here, I'm here, the answer to your problems. And then within three years, three and a half years of that time of Jacob's trouble, that same man is going to go into the third rebuilt temple. And, all, and this man is going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. That's what I personally believe. Okay, but this man is going to go into the third rebuilt temple having a visage like the Roman Catholic Jesus. And he's going to say to the Jewish people, I am. And you know what? He's going to be a Christian. Yes, he is. Because the religion that he is going to be purporting is number one, worship of himself, which coincides with Isaiah chapter 14. Okay, verses 12 on to verse 15, Satan, I will be like the Most High, okay? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, not morning star, okay? So the religion that that man of sin is going to be pushing, prostituting, is going to be a form of Catholicism, pre-Vatican II Catholicism, that you can read about in the Council of Trent, okay? The Council of Trent. Vatican II is smoke and mirrors. It's an ecumenical uh, butt wipe, so to speak, okay? And you know what you got have happening today in the Vatican, like with uh, Francis, <coughs> excuse me, the puppet pope to Sosa, talking about how sodomy is not a crime. <laughs> Bravo to these performers. Uh, uh, the, of the Vatican. Wow, what, what a performance. What a performance. But then again, you got to remember about Pope Francis. He's a puppet to Sosa, okay? What is his goal? Okay, the pre-Vatican II Catholics who would kill anybody to reinstate when Rome was in her glory days. Okay, like uphold the doctrines of the Council of Trent. And see what uh, Francis said recently about uh, sodomy is not a crime. It's contrary to the teachings of the catechism itself. So see, uh, Francis is there to light the light of the stick of dynamite. Okay? That's what he's doing. All right? That's what he's doing with that. All right? But see, Satan has used these types of things to stir up woman against man, ultimately against the order of God, okay? And see, it says here, that man of sin, the son of perdition, verse four, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped, so that he... As God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a man. Satan knows all too well that feminism is doomed to fail. Feminism is doomed to fail. But see, on that road to it failing, 
It's going to bring down as many as it can with it. And that's the point. That's the point. And see, on to the feminist. On to the feminist. I can do anything just as well as a man or even better. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 3. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits, capital S, of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and art dead, dead in trespasses and sins. Feminism is contrary to God. Feminism is contrary to the order of God that he has clearly established. Okay? And we're going to look at some of these things. All right? Like I said, big, in-depth, detailed um, examination of this. The Woman of God, Parts 1 and 2. Check that out. Okay? But, let's continue. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and believe. Oh, excuse me. Repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come unto thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Ooh, what a warning. What a warning. You're living your life in sin, living your life in rebellion against God. You're allowing the devil to be your head over your husband. Yeah. Yeah. Your breaking can come suddenly and at an instant. You got to be aware of that. Now, again, some of you women that may see this who are like, well, Brad, you're, you're speaking against women. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Proverbs 30. Oh, uh, Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Okay? Proverbs 31, verses 30, on to verse 31. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her own, give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. And at the judgment seat of Christ, we of the church of the living God, we are going to receive for our works, whether it be good or bad. And that's something. So here, give her of the fruit of her hands. Now, in Proverbs 31, verses 10, on to verse 31, gives you an excellent picture of what a godly woman is to be. Okay, like I say, we talk about that in the woman of God. We're not going to talk about it here. Questions about that? Check those out, okay? But when the head has been replaced by what Satan offers, give her the fruit of her hands. There's something aberrant and unattractive and ugly about a woman taking on the mannerisms of a man and, and dressing like a man and think that it's the most noble thing to take on and to assume the, the toxic things that be a fallen mankind. It's, it's revolting. It's ugly. Okay? Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. Favor of the Lord? God forbid! No, the favor of the Lord, that's life unto life. But the favor that comes from the devil, the flesh, the world, and the devil, that favor is deceitful, isn't it? Isn't it? Because, yeah, I mean, that thumbnail. You got the one businesswoman and you got that thing that's supposed to look like a woman. That's actually a professional wrestler. Her name is Rhea, her character name is Rhea Ripley. Atrocious, atrocious. And you know what's scary? That woman could probably whip the snot out of me just like that. Okay? That's that's scary. That's scary. That's not a woman. And also, see, also how Satan has uh, done to you dear women out there, pornography. Oh, Lord have mercy. Pornography. Pornography. 
Our Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ, has roles, okay, for mankind, okay? Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 28. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Why are you to do that? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Adam was not made for Eve. Eve was made for Adam. And see, in that union, that yoke of marriage together, the woman is to be the helpmeet unto the man. And the man, in turn, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, there are some that take that and abuse it. His Holiness from Maine did that four-part video thing on that disgusting devil who's rotting in hell right now, um, Jack Hile, Jerk Hiles. And that type of literal toxic masculinity, which tries to use the scripture as its base, but yet it turns, the, it's, the, it's toxic. What it does is it takes the authority that the man is to have over the head of the wife and militarizes it, weaponizes it. No, 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 no. That is what is called toxic masculinity. Okay? All right? Where a man thinks because he's the head that he has the right to get physical. And if you were to watch um, that four-part uh, series by His Holiness uh, in Maine on uh, Jerk Hiles, that was the exact kind of masculinity being um, promoted by those types of people, these uh, uh, new independent fundamental Baptists, like the Steve Anderson guys, okay, with their toxic masculinity, okay? There is a masculinity that is comes to us from scripture okay but it isn't to the point where we are to be militaristic as if we are the general in the home barking orders no 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 and see it's because of these christians that take that role and try to use the scriptures as their ammunition in their gun to use to abuse women no. No, 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 no. Because, look at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I'm supposed to give myself for my wife. If it comes down to it, I am to die for my wife. Okay? All right? All right? that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. With, uh, let me read that again. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the word. Okay? That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. So see, the greater admonition is unto we, the man. Okay? But see, the woman you, woman, are to be submissive unto your husband. If you do not have a husband, 
like it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, then you will have no distraction. You can be pure in spirit and in body and whatnot unto the Lord. Okay? All right? And praise the Lord for that. The Lord is your head covering. Okay? You can have a someone who is over you as a head covering, um, say, a, um, I, hate, I don't like to use this word, but it is a scriptural word, a pastor. Okay? Yes, you can. Yes, you can, okay? But your ultimate head covering is the Lord himself, okay? And the Lord himself will not have you as woman to domineer and to control a man. But see, what Satan has done by bringing in the enemy on the altar and other means of deception has pumped into the minds of many women to rebel to resist to fight back unfortunately there are some men out there who will without any hesitation go off and haul off and slap a woman evil I will say this I will tell you this I will tell you this if and I caught heat for this on the last time I said this but this is you know depraved indifference is sin Okay, if a woman is going to attack me with a butcher knife or come at me with a butcher knife. Okay, <laughs> that's 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 different. Okay, I do know how to defend myself. Okay, and if a woman's going to come after me and try to stab me with a butcher knife, I'm going to do what I'm going to have to do to disarm her and th that'll be it. Okay. So yes, if you as a woman are going to take it upon yourself to attack a man with a weapon or something like that, um, yeah, 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 yeah. If a woman comes after me personally with a knife, um, you can expect me to get a little physical. Because, uh, you know, you ever been stabbed before? <laughs> Very quickly, a little rabbit here. When I was working as a uh, saute chef, long, long ago, I was on a line, a cooking line, you know, cooking, and there was a guy walking behind me with a French knife, you know, the big, big knife with it blade out, walking behind me on the line, and he didn't say, I'm behind you, and didn't have the blade tucked on his um, forearm here like you're supposed to, but he had the blade uh, going, you know, sticking out that way, and... Uh, <laughs> He didn't say he was behind me. And I'm working, cooking, and I turn around and I walk into a knife. I got stabbed in the back. Okay, it's like, ah! Oh, that hurt. And yes, yes, I punched the guy out for doing that. Yes, I did. I was a lost man. Okay, yes, I did. Ah! Yes, I did. Okay, but nonetheless, nonetheless, that's a little rabbit trail. You know, if a woman is going to take upon herself to try to come at a man with a weapon. But there again, there's that thing about if a woman goes and strikes a man. Now, if a woman were to come and strike me, I would not strike back. I would. I would. No. No. Wow. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. But see, the mere fact that a woman would be led or felt like that was something that she had the right to do. Where does that come from? It does not come from the Lord. I can guarantee you that. That comes from the flesh, the world, and the devil. Okay? That's where that comes from. And the system of feminization, trying to feminize the world, it's doomed to fail. But see, in doing so, it is making a populace of cowards. A populace that, in order to combat it, will fight fire with fire and try to come up with a masculinity just as toxic as the feminism is. How do you win with that? You don't. You don't. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 
First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Now here is a good admonition to you, woman. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. A fool uttereth all her mind, but a wise man keep it in till afterwards. Yeah. I'm always amazed about how some of these women have virtually no restraint over this mouth of theirs. Wow. Wow. Man's deadliest weapon is the mouth. Man's deadliest weapon is the mouth. One second, please. I got to write that down so I don't forget. Yes, man's deadliest weapon is the mouth. Okay? And a woman is supposed to be chaste. Chaste. Adorning herself in the fear of the Lord. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. On the outside. Make the outside beautiful. But on the inside, they're like, they're filled with dead men's bones. And see, and this is the vileness of pornography that teaches men to see women as only an object, like a piece of meat, a tool. Disgusting. And that is what pornography does. It teaches man to look at women as objects. And the Jezebel woman, who knows that they got all of that, can also use that in order to control a man. And they get that through what? Television, and through media, and through literature of feminism and stuff like that. Okay? Verse 4, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, the hidden man of the heart. Who's the hidden man of the heart? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The heart that is perfect unto the Lord. The heart that belongs unto the Lord. Okay? And if you're, if you're a woman watching this and you're not saved, this doesn't apply to you. But this ought to. This ought to. You need to be saved. Okay? This is what God wants of you, woman. A noble, a glorious thing for you as woman. But see, Satan, in order to uh, bring in destruction, has told you, fight back. You, you don't need a man. You Look at that man. Look at that man. You rule over him. And I personally believe that here in America, we are soon going to see our very first female president. And there are rightly so a lot of nations out there that hate America. When America puts out there its very first and probably last president that will be a female, Lord have mercy. But, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible. Yeah, you can't corrupt the Lord Jesus Christ if he is the hidden man of the heart. Even that ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. So a woman is to have a meek and quiet spirit. But see, you got television, you got media, you got certain kinds of literature out there telling women to be loud and boastful, to stand up, fight for your rights. Do you not see the fruit of it? For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God, trusted in God, God of the scriptures, adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. 
Verse 7. Okay? Verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Verse 7 ties that up very nicely in a little package for us. We as the man, okay, we are to dwell with them according to knowledge, as the weaker vessel. That Rhea Ripley thing there that you see, uh, the thumbnail, I bet you with all the weightlifting and the steroids she takes, all them wrestlers are on steroids. <laughs> they are. Um, she's probably stronger than I am. Yes, yeah, she's probably stronger than you, you stupid bloke from England. Yes, she probably is. Yes. But that, that's scary. That's not a weaker vessel. But see, under I bet you underneath all that masculinity of that disgusting looking woman and the steroids that she takes, there's probably somewhere just a little child screaming, crying out. The only one that can answer her and be there for her is the Lord. But see, we as men, we are to live with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. She's not a man. She's not a man. Usually most women um, are far more sensitive than we men are. That's not always the case. Okay, that is not always the case. But in a general sense, okay? Women are more emotional. Men tend to be logical to a fault. Whereas women tend to be emotional to a fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And we are to dwell with woman as, of, as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. That your prayers be not hindered. Heirs together. And you got this, this bizarre... It seems to come from the Baptists, from what I have gathered. And like I said, His Holiness from Maine did that four-part thing on Jerk Hiles, which was very good. It was very good. And you can see that masculinity, that Hiles-esque masculinity come out, uh, which he addresses in those videos. I, I don't like that guy, respect him or trust him at all, but the videos he did on the Jerk Hiles were absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I do got to recommend those. Okay? But see, verse 7 here tells us that we are not to be domineering. We are not to be militaristic. Okay? We are not to rule as by fear and force. We're not supposed to do that. When we encounter a woman, a sister, who is being rebellious. There's only one thing that we can do as the church of the living God. And it's actually the most terrifying. But we're going to address that a little later. Now go to Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47. See, you read in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Satan went to who? Satan went to Eve. There is now, there are two folds to that that we can talk about in, Isaiah, in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7, about the, the Garden of Eden, how Satan, the serpent, went to the woman and said, Yea, hath God said that ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Then Eve says, He has said we shall not eat of, uh, uh, we can eat of uh, every tree of the garden except the tree in the midst of the garden. God said, don't eat of it, neither touch it, lest ye die. But he never said, don't touch it. Eve added to the word of God. Okay? And then what does Satan say? It's like, thou shalt not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
And then when Eve saw the fruit on the tree and that it was good for food and it was desirable to, for one to make one wise or whatnot, she took of the, the fruit of the tree and she ate of it. And then she went, then she went on to her husband and gave it to him and he did eat. Okay? And their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. And hence here we are today. Now the arguments are, well, where was Adam during all that, right? Where was Adam that Eve was alone? But then another point to that is, okay, that, and that's a valid question. One that we ask in the video of the woman of God. Where was Adam? But also, why wasn't Eve by Adam? Because when you read in Genesis, that woman, which means of man, was made of man to be a helpmeet unto the man. Now, granted, she, you know, the woman, unless you're that steroid popping monster, Rhea Ripley who can, you know, lift big things over their head and stuff like that. Um, women were not, are not, were not made to be these physical domineering creatures. No, no, to be a help meet, okay? Gardening, stuff like that. Uh, plowing, you know, I, I, you know, well, that's more of a, something that the man ought to do, but you, you get the point, a help meet onto him, okay? And as that... Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, okay? He who loves his wife loves himself. That's what that means, all right? Okay? But Satan with feminism comes along. He goes to the woman. Because what happens? What happens? Look at what has happened, okay? Look at what has happened. You go, the nucleus of the family is what? Is what? Woman. Think about it. Man is the head. Man, God, man, woman, children. But see, Satan goes to the woman to and to and through that way seeks to destroy the nucleus of the family. And bring in feminism through the guise of the enemy on the altar or whatever it is. And interject this. Feminism, this idea that man is incapable of anything without a strong, domineering woman to keep him in line. When it's supposed to be the hidden man of the heart of a meek and quiet spirit. You see? So Satan, through this system of feminization, going after the woman, and hence, in going after the woman, what happens? The woman uses many things, can use many things to get onto her husband about many things and whatever. See, Satan goes after the woman. Now, Satan can go after the man. Absolutely, that happens. Absolutely. Amen. But we have in Scripture, we have in Scripture, the tactics that Satan uses. He goes to the woman first, who is the weaker vessel. Where was Adam in the Garden of Eden? Don't know. But an even better question is, okay, and that's a, that's a legit question. Well, where was Adam? Why was Eve not with Adam? Isaiah chapter 47, verses 8 on to verse 13. And see, once this rebellion against the order of God, once this rebellion that comes in brought about because of the enemy on the altar and many other means which Satan and his devices offer. Isaiah 47, verses 8 unto verse 13. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, Neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The loss of, thy ch of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. For the multitude of thy sorceries. 
and for the great abundance of thine enchantments, sorceries and enchantments. You have a television in your home? You have a, you have a source of media that you don't regulate or have moderation with? You're asking for all kinds of trouble, friend. You're asking for all kinds of trouble. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I am. I am woman, hear me roar. You won't have a man to rule over you. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. Which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit. If so be thou mayest prevail. And the truth is thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Wearied, made weak, like water hitting a stone. Constantly. Water that wears away the stones. Isn't that something? Let now the astrologers and the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Let the gods that you worship on your television worship, uh, save you. Hmm? Good luck. Because what is being uh, given to you through that means of media the little she got of this world who is giving on to you a system that is meant to fail because once we the church of the living God are redeemed all this feminism this feministic agenda that is being pushed on everything at least here in America at least here in America it's doomed to fail. And just as Napoleon Bonaparte was used by the Jesuits, like Trump will be used of the Jesuits to bring his nationalistic people behind him and to ultimately sacrifice them for the Vatican. As is feminism. That all those that rally behind it and support it and are for it, when it falls... It's going to take down so many with it. Because it's going to be falling. It's going to fall. It cannot stand on its own. Do you not see the feminization of society? And I think that's generally, I, I don't know about in all nations. I don't. But I mean, here in America, man. And what? And, and it's, it's the Hegelian principle in its fulfillment. Okay, argument, counter-argument, and when you control the argument and counter-argument, you can control the outcome of the argument. The Hegelian principle, or Hegelian dialect. So, you come up with feminism. How do you combat feminism with this disgusting, military-esque, masculine, uh, toxic masculinity? Okay? Alright? Well, we need to put women in their place. What about putting the man in his place who thinks that, who will go to the scriptures and try to justify violence? Not just physical, but mental. Like I said, man's greatest weapon is what? Ah, the mouth. The mouth. I can recover if my good friend from England were to beat the snot out of me. I could recover. I'd get a few good licks on him too. But uh, I could recover from that. 
um, it's a lot harder to recover from the wounds that come from the tongue. And that's for both man and woman that can inflict such grievous wounds. Now go to Isaiah chapter 57, verses 3 on verse 12, okay? Isaiah chapter 57, verses 3 on verse 12. But draw nigh hither, ye sons of the sorceress, and seed of the adulterer and the whore, mystery of Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, big spider. Okay? Well, it says sons there. Yes, the sons of Loyola, the Jesuit order that is promoting feminism. Okay? All right? And you do have to remember, dear friend, Lucifer is a male. Okay? All right? got to remember that. The son of perdition is going to be a man. This feminism, this feministic culture, this system of feminization, you go in and pump up the woman with all these lies contrary to the scripture, and it brings up the woman to rebel against man, ultimately against what God has. Here we are. Here we are. And reinforced, reinforced, through the enemy on the altar and the other devices of Satan. Verse 4. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed, a seed of falsehood? You supporters of feminism. Okay. What are you? You are children of transgression. You are a seed of falsehood. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. You are a woman. Here you were, right? Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. And ultimately, feminism is there to do what? To destroy the family. To destroy the bond, the marriage, the union of husband and wife of bearing of children and raising children and teaching children because what happens I mean praise the, I mean like I've so, said to you before I would have loved to have had children but praise the Lord that I don't because number one I struggle too much with my pride okay I do I do but number two look at look at look at what has happened today if I had a child if we had a child we would never send him, to, send him or her to a school. No. Be right here. Here's your textbook. Okay. Yes, we would get other books on math and stuff like that. History. Let's talk about history. True history. Okay. True history. Okay. This would be the textbook. Okay. This. The authorized version. If we had children, we wouldn't send them to school. God forbid. God forbid. You would be better off giving your children the steel of the Jesuit poniard than sending your children to a school. Okay? Yeah. And what do they do? Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. And usually the idols for us today are what? Are they the statues? Yes, they can be. But most of the times the idol is the one that you're looking at in the mirror. Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. They're damaging your children by sending them to school. Let's not sugarcoat it, brethren. I mean, unless a child has a good foundation, someone there who can tell them, it's like, hey, you know, like our brother from out north, from uh, northeast. Okay, his grandchildren are unfortunately it's not his call. They're not his kids. He's the grandfather. Okay, he cannot rightly step in between a mother and a father and say you can't do that. He can say that this is what God says, and you're going contrary to it. But see, they're in the school system, and he is the grandfather as a, as of the Church of the Living God still has that influence on those children. It's like, hey, okay, you're hearing about evolution in school. That's, that's nonsense. Let me tell you what God says, okay? 
But still, sending a child to a school is death. Death. If you're saved, or even if you're lost, get your children out of school. Get them out of school. Lord have mercy. Verse 6. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They are they they are they they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Yeah. Where do you go to comfort? The Lord or Satan, the world? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed, high above everybody else. Even thither wentest thou up to offer a sacrifice. Behold, behind the doors also and the posts hast thou set up thy re remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. And that is a result of Satan giving you the world in a moment of time through media and telling you what is beautiful. Telling you what a woman ought to be. And what, the, and what is per, uh, put off onto you? Some dolled up looking piece of meat. Plastic. Depending on your taste, huh? One that looks horrific, that are injected with steroids and have muscles that big. And thou winnest to the king with ointment. What king? And didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. You look up some of these statistics of these women that are in like the CEO, like the other, the one on the left, the CEO women and stuff like that, about the um, ulcers and stuff like that, the, the health conditions that are coming upon them for taking upon them things that are there specifically that man should be doing and not woman. Also, look at the, also the contrary to that about how the man is taking on what ought to be the woman, okay? We were watching that um, Abdullam Films um, documentary. Uh, um, oh, I uh, he did a four-part thing on the Illuminati, something like that. Something like that. But one, a commercial, you know, because we watch it on YouTube, we watch documentaries and stuff on YouTube, uh, stuff like that, and uh, videos from the Brethren and whatnot. And there came up a commercial... Where a guy, a man, had a baby in one of these slings with the baby hanging there, doing like it was Mr. Mom, doing the laundry and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, wow. Wow. Talk about role reversal. I do laundry. I do dishes. Okay. If I had a child, I wouldn't put it that... Touch the child, okay? It'll thank you in the long run, okay? But see, that, something like that is so disgusting where you hang the child here so your hands are free to go through merchandise, okay? But it's like, okay, the image that that pr uh, produces, that man is doing the woman's chores, what the woman is supposed to be doing. And like, hey, 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 like I said, I will do laundry, I do dishes. I vacuum. Okay. Yeah, I live here too. Okay. All right. I live here too. All right. It's it's a it's a team effort. Okay. All right. It's like I I take care of the I vacuum the floor. My wife sweeps. Okay. We both kind of are iffy at the dusting, but see, we work together on that. Okay. But what Satan gives you is a complete role reversal, just like that wicked movie, Mr. Mom. Okay, some of you might remember that. Okay, vile, evil. But look at the consequence. Look at the fruit of it. Look at the fruit of it. And look at the fruit of the mentality of the society that has been brought up in that and is being raised in that.
Thou art weary, verse 10, thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou hast not grieved. Yeah. See, in order to be saved, you have to be brought to that point of hopelessness. Even Ruckman himself once said, if you've never been brought to the uh, to hopelessness, how are you how would you ever be saved? Hopeless. There is no hope. So what do you think breaking of your self righteousness is? There's no hope. I can't do it. I am not good. You see, in order to be truly saved, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. And being broken of your self-righteousness is being brought to that place where you can't be. Where you can't be. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Because when you have no hope, what else is there to do? There's only one option. The Lord. The Lord. You have to be brought to a place of no hope. No hope. There is no hope. You get brought to that place, that's when hope actually appears in the face of Jesus Christ. But see, this verse here, thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, your self-righteousness. Yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Why? Because I'm not that bad. Where does this stem from? Right here, flesh. It's all about flesh. Okay? Thou hast found the life of thine hand, thine hand, yeah. Therefore thou was not grieved. Therefore thou was not grieved. And what is that? Uh, I believe that's Philippians chapter 3. Hold your place in Isaiah. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. One second, please. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. And then you look back at Isaiah chapter 57, verse 10, thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way. Okay? Flesh wearies you, if you haven't figured that one out already. <laughs> the spirit indeed is welling, but the flesh is weak. Even if it's steroid-ridden, iron-pumping flesh, the flesh is weak. Flesh deteriorates, no matter how many plastic surgeries one can have. No matter the, the paint roller makeup you can put on it, you're, that, it's a sagging skin suit. Okay? Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy, thy way, yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. While you still have hope in yourself or in something that you're getting from the world, you're not at a point of uh, brokenness. You're a Christian, and yet you still think you're not that bad as so-and-so. You're not truly broken. You're not saved. See, being broken is being brought to that point of hopelessness. And when brought to the point of hopelessness, there's only one thing you can do. Look up. That's the only thing you can do. Perfect. This is a perfect verse which speaks about someone who is not broken. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. Verse 11 in Isaiah 57. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared? That thou hast lied and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thy heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest, fearest me not? Remember that part right there. Held my peace of old, and thou fearest me, and 
Have I not held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? Verse 12. I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Because it's all based on flesh. Not based upon anything God has said, but flesh. Flesh, the world, and the devil. Go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Verses 28 on to verse 34. Ezekiel chapter 28, uh, 16, verses 28 on to verse 34. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou was unsatiable, couldn't be satisfied. When is it enough? Have a little moderation. When is it enough? Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Scripture defining itself. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou wast not satisfied herewith. Hmm, in the land of Canaan. Another way we could kind of put this is going back to Egypt. Going back to Egypt. There's a reason why the Lord does not want us to return back to Egypt, into the world. Why? Because the world can snare you and defile you. We know this, but we need to be reminded of it, brethren. And, and, and verse, verse 30. How weak is thine heart, said the Lord God. Seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an, of an imperious, whorish woman. In that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and hast not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. Oh, wow, huh? But as a wife that committeth adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband, in the physical sense, yes. But what about in the spiritual sense? What about in the spiritual sense? And this also goes for the men too. The men who will sit there and watch football and sports entertainment. Hmm? This goes both ways. Committing adultery on your wife. Spiritual adultery on your wife. Especially if you're watching that pro wrestling with them women wrestling, right? The female gladiators. Yeah. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers and hirest them that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. And the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms. Whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms. And in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee, therefore thou art contrary. What reward is there in feminism? Your independence from God, right? Good luck with that at the great white throne of judgment. Good luck with that. Now see, our enemies... And this, I, I dealt with this from with the Muslims. About, they said to, about uh, Ezekiel 23, your God, the God of the Bible. Well, my God is not the God of the Bible. My God is the God of the Scriptures. There's a big difference. But the, your God of the Scriptures hates women. Really? Yeah, Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel, or what we just read in Ezekiel 16 about how God talks about women as whores. Th these are what are called allegories, okay? That video will be in the description box for you where we address the thing of Ezekiel 23. I remember a uh, uh, when I first encountered that argument from a Muslim, he's like, read Ezekiel 23. It's like, I've read it quite a few times. What's, what's your point? What's your point? And then he pointed out a few verses, and it's like, well, let's see, your God hates women. It's like, are you stupid? That's an allegory. Okay? For example, 
For example, you read in Proverbs 8, chapter 1, uh, uh, Proverbs 8, verses 1 on to verse 10. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is compared unto what? A beautiful woman. Also, in Proverbs 9, 1 on to verse 6, you see wisdom again compared unto the beauty of a woman. The fear of the Lord is... Uh, for us to kind of grasp it in our pea brains. The fear of the Lord is likened unto the most gorgeous woman you could ever imagine. And ten times even more, the fear of the Lord. Okay? The fear of the Lord is comparable unto a beautiful woman. Then again, what's the contrary to that? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, as you read in Proverbs chapter 7. Okay, and we address this in great detail in the Woman of God video, okay, video, so check that out, all right? But the contrary to the beauty of wisdom comparable unto a fine, beautiful-looking woman, you have the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She is loud and stubborn and abideth not in her house when a, the woman of God is supposed to be of a meek and a quiet spirit. Mm-hmm. See, these are allegories. These are allegories. Our Lord is not against woman. Our Lord is against feminism. But our Lord is not against women. Uh, no, he made woman for man. Okay? And women can bring in children. Okay? Glorious. Beautiful. Okay? Beautiful. God has a structure of things. And the flesh, the world, and the devil has come along and turned it all topsy-turvy. And we're seeing the fruit of it. And also, too, Jerusalem, the daughter of Zion, which is where a lot of these enemies will take their issue is compared onto, well, you got to see this, this one right here smacks you kind of like right in the face of what we're talking about. Just one verse, uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. You don't get any more plainer than this. Jeremiah verse, chapter 6, verse 2. Our Lord says, I have likened the daughter of Zion, the Hebrews, Israel, okay, to a comely and delicate woman. <laughs> you, you don't get any plainer than that. Okay? And in an allegory sense, the book of Hosea. Okay? The book of Hosea. All right? Yes, it's about Hosea and his relation with Gomer, but that is a type of the relationship that Israel had with God. See? It's an allegory. Our Lord speaks in such terms, okay? And also you read in Zephaniah about the daughter of Zion, okay? These are allegories. These are allegories. It is not at all that our Lord is against women. Not at all. These are allegories. And see, ignorant, willfully ignorant, which is stupid, Muslims come along and say, well, Ezekiel 23 shows that your God is against women. No, it's, a, it's an allegory, which also will be in the description box for you to consider, okay? But see now, what happens? What happens with this feminism? Women calling the shots. Let's look at the best one. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19 to start. Then all the now this is after after that Jeremiah had preached, hey, Nebuchadnezzar is coming. Repent for, you know, submit yourself unto him, submit yourself unto God's punishment, and it'll go well with you. They said, no, we're not going to do that. So the punishment that was going to happen was made ten times worse. Okay? And then Ishmael came along and killed the one guy, Gedaliah, who Nebuchadnezzar put as a 
uh, in charge of the remnant at Israel, of Jerusalem, excuse me, after he licked, beat the snot out of them, okay? And this Ishmael kills Gadaliah. And then the guys, the survivors who chase off Ishmael, they're like, okay, what do we do? We want to go to Egypt. We want to go to Egypt. They go to Jeremiah and say, hey, go to the Lord and ask him. And whatever the Lord says, that's what we're going to do. And he's like, okay, he goes to the Lord and the Lord says, don't go to Egypt. And they say, what? Ah, the Lord hasn't saved for you to go, go to Egypt. But Baruch, the son of Uriah, sent Theon against us. And they go to Egypt. <clears throat> okay? They go to Egypt. Contrary to what the Lord says. That's the backstory. Verses 15 on verse 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, So what do we see here? A Jezebel type of mentality. Jezebel, who controlled her husband Ahab, the little sissy wimp that he was. Okay? As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us, in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. Feminism, this, this, this spirit... Spirit of feminism. Jezebel's spirit does not appear in scripture. Jezebel's spirit does not appear in scripture. That spirit of Antichrist does. But that spirit, that contrary, replacing and against spirit, there is a point of no return. These people just here that we're reading just had the snot kicked out of them. And they were told specifically, don't do something by the Lord. And they said it was a lie and did what they wanted to do anyway. The impossible is possible with the Lord. Absolutely. But it's not looking good. Because there is a line that someone can cross in that line of feminism. If you're a woman and you want to constantly berate your husband, you want to constantly do what you're going to do. Some of you might have to consider, if have I gone too far? And see, if you're willing to consider, have I gone too far? That's a good thing. But have you found the strength life of your own hand and say that I have not been brought to that point where there is no hope, but you still have hope because you have found the strength of your own hand, right? But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary, and to pour out, our, to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Without our men? Why? Because the women were the ones calling the shots by an emasculated man in Jerusalem. Because why? Why? See, we as men, we need to say those things to sometimes. We are the head, okay? We are to take the sword of the spirit, okay? And as, now go here because I want you to get this uh, into your mind. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, okay? When we as husband, when we as man are dealing with this, we have to remember verse 12 in Hebrews 4. 
For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We are to speak in terms of Scripture. Okay? When dealing with this in our wives or whatever, we have to speak in terms of Scripture using the sword of the spirit okay we cannot we cannot work with our own words okay because why we can use our own words and we can cause more damage okay but see the word of god will cause damage but yet in that damage will bring bring hope and hopelessness does that make sense does that make sense see we sometimes are put in a place where we have to say those hard things. When we have to say these things according to Scripture. Okay? But what happens? Sometimes we as man will faint. Because why? Because why? We want peace and quiet, don't we? We want peace and quiet. Yes. Why and why is that? Because okay, go to the Proverbs. Let's look at a couple one line liners here. Okay, Proverbs nineteen, uh, verses thirteen on to verse fourteen. A foolish son is the calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are continual dropping. Now, in context, a foolish son, someone who is acting, uh, who is acting as if they say in their heart there is no God. So the contentions of a wife are continual dropping. They're contending with this uh, son because he's acting foolish. Okay. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So see right there, verses thirteen and fourteen. I know a lot of people go to this. It's like, oh, my wife is nagging. You got to look at it for what it's saying. Okay. A foolish son, someone who is acting foolish, behaving as if they say in their heart, there is no God. Okay. So uh, contentions of a wife, when someone is acting foolish, as if they're acting, behaving as if they say in their heart, there is no God. And then it's followed up. A prudent wife is from the Lord. This is not... Uh, about the contentions of a wife. If you're uh, acting foolish and your wife is contending with you, amen. Praise the Lord. It's a prudent wife. Okay? But now go to Proverbs 21, verse 9. Okay? Verse 9. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman. In a wide house. Oh, yes. And the woman is supposed to be, and we already looked at this, of a meek and quiet spirit. But go about and brawling? Hmm? Hmm. A brawling woman. Hmm. It's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop. Get away from them. Get away. Uh, women? Your husband's being brawling, won't listen, even when you're contending because he's acting foolish? Draw back, go away from them, okay? And while in Proverbs 21, verse 19, okay? It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Oh, wow. And see, a contentious and angry woman. Satan goes after the woman. And then feeds the woman with what? Things from the, uh, uh, the enemy on the altar and things of the world. Okay? And you, man, the spiritual head, the head of the house. And yet that's happening. Oh boy. Oh boy. Makes you, well, what have I done wrong? There comes times when we have to be the hard one, brother, sister. When we have to be the one to say the thing that's going to sting. Not out of anger. Not out of vehemence. Not out of a thing to get even. But out of love. Speaking the truth in love. 
Because what happens? In order to keep peace in the house, we will go silent. When there are times when we ought to speak up. Hmm? And now go to Proverbs 25, one verse. Verse 24. Verse 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Again. And the woman is to be quiet and meek. Okay? A woman who is being contentious because you're acting foolishly, praise the Lord. That means you've got a prudent wife. Praise the Lord. But when a woman is angry and contentious, you're told, we are told to what? Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Why does that happen? Hmm? Why? Why is it happening nowadays? Because Satan has gone after woman. And you go after the woman, and that and the woman in the marriage, and happy wife, happy life, as the saying goes, right? You see how that works? We have to be ever on guard against this. And one more. Verse, uh, Proverbs 27, verses 15 and 16. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Contentious. Okay? Now, what we saw in Proverbs 19... What we saw in Proverbs 19, okay, the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. Contentions. Uh, honey, you, you're, you're acting foolish. You're, you, honey, you shouldn't be doing that. Honey, you shouldn't be doing Honey, you're doing, right? But here in verse, in chapter 27, uh, verse 15, okay, in chapter 27, verse 15, a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. You know there's a difference from contending and being contentious? We are to contend for the faith, but we are not to be contentious. A woman who is contending because you're acting foolish is one thing. A woman who is contentious in and of itself, that's something totally uh, totally different. Because look at verse 16. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind, and the ointment of his right hand, which bewrayeth itself. Whereas in Proverbs 19, verse 14, okay, let's go there and let's compare this, okay? In uh, Proverbs 19, verse 14, House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from the Lord. So verse 13 is talking about, verse four, in 14, here in Proverbs 19, this is a prudent wife who is contending with someone who is acting foolish. Okay? That's a good thing. But see here in Proverbs 27, verses 15 on to verse 16, it's the opposite of a woman who is just being contentious for the sake of being contentious. And whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. And let, I'll let you figure out that one on itself. Okay? All right. But see, these contentions, this, the contentiousness, that brought about what we see in Jeremiah chapter 44. Let's go back there. In Jeremiah chapter 44. Okay. That was what was happening. Okay. The women were not contending with the men because the men were obviously being foolish. But it was the opposite. Okay. And the men wanted peace and quiet. Rather than standing as man and standing on the word of God. I know, brethren. When I, when I, and I can, because I got a pride problem. When I act, act foolish, my wife contends with me. Brad, you're acting foolish. You're right, baby. 
You're right. But what about when it's contentious? Mm -hmm. Contentious. There's a difference between contending and being contentious. Our enemies are contentious. Okay? Now go back to Jeremiah chapter 44. Let's read now from verses 20 on to verse 28. What God has to say about all this. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men, and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying, The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and came it not into his mind, so that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings? And because of the abominations which ye have committed, therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. The ultimate end of feminism. Because ye have burned incense, and because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people, and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, and all in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed, because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. Yeah, you're going to do it. You will. Therefore hear ye the word of the Lord. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt, behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man in, of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Behold, I will watch, and now pay attention to this. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet, here's his mercy. Okay, verse, verse 27 is the judgment. Verse 28 is the mercy. And a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. And all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt, the sojourn there shall know whose word shall stand. Mine are theirs. Yeah. Feminism is a cancer. Feminism is a cancer. God is against feminism. God is not against a woman being feminine. God is not against woman. Okay? Not at all. What God is against is what Satan wants woman to be. That's why a woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And I know of many of you sisters, sisters in Christ, who are actual sisters, who know all this and seek to adhere unto it. You godly sisters out there with your uh, who are married, you know this and praise you. Praise you. Because the reality is, brethren, like Solomon said, a man among a thousand have I not, have I not found. Uh, only a more was it. Something like, a man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Why? Why? Solomon, the ultimate player, who had over a thousand women at his disposal. To actually find, to be given a godly, 
saved, born again, woman of the Church of the Living God. What a treasure. What a blessing. Give her the fruits of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. I know of a sister over in the UK, a truly godly woman, a truly godly woman, who one day, who one day will be the antif uh, will be the height of the Proverbs 31 woman, of the woman that Peter talks about. I know also of some of you sisters as well here in my own nation. Such a gem, such a beautiful gem, and such a pleasure unto the Lord. But see, feminism is a sickness. It's a disease. It's a disease spread by Satan and his many devices. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And remember, hold your place here, of what we saw in Isaiah chapter 57. Hmm? Remember what we saw? Isaiah 57. Verse 10. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet saidest thou not, there is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. And God has not call, come to call the righteous, i.e. the self-righteous, who think they're not that bad, but sinners to repentance. What do you do? What do you do when the word of God, when you do as the man, as the husband, uh, and this goes both ways. When the one whom you love is getting messed up, what do you do? And you can see God's chastisement, but yet they're still being stubborn about it. What do you do? What do you do? Romans chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. There are lesbians for you. Okay? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... Here we see it again. God gave them over. God gave them over. To a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And where do we see this? Um, verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. As in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And you got to remember, you got to remember, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. This was a guy who was actually saved. But he was delivered unto Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay? And the Christians, right? They were like, well, we're not judging you. Okay? I know some people like to argue this man wasn't saved. Oh, I think he was. But just messed up. Okay, as many of us of the Church of the Living God can get messed up. 
But when they won't hear rebuke, when you've talked, and this goes both ways. You have the wife contending with your husband because he's acting foolishly. Or you, the wife, who are contentious. And your husband is like, hey, you know, you're going contrary to the scripture. And, okay, you're doing what you're supposed to do. And they're not, they're not taking it. I've seen this before. What do you got to do? Back away. Hand them over to the Lord. One of the more terrifying things ought to be onto anyone. It's like, okay, I'll turn you over onto the Lord. Okay? I turn you over to the Lord. And then when you start seeing the chastisement happening before you, it's like, oh, wow. Because, see, we are not supposed to take it upon ourselves in a physical, violent, militaristic way as a means to control. No, because we have already seen uh, fellow heirs, okay? Fellow heirs. We are to work together. But when people are going contrary to the scripture and you through the scripture, it's like, hey, hey, this is the, you're doing this, you're doing this, and they're not taking it. There's only one thing left for you to do. Okay. Back away. It's like, Lord, I've done what, I've, what I'm supposed to do. You do it. Psalm 81. And then we'll be done. Psalm 81. Psalm 81, verses 8 on to verse 16. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. The gods given to you by the enemy on the altar... Or ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Which one is it? The one leads on to the other, and vice versa. When you are your own God, you can justify anything. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice. Israel with none of me. Here we see it again. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should, have, I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. It's a scary thing when you reach a point where you are turned over onto the Lord because you're being a little too stubborn and refusing to hear and not willing to bend. It, it happens with saved people. See, and this is a misconception, and this is where the enemy comes in with about, you know, uh, well, once saved, always saved is a lie. No, once saved, always saved is true. Uh, people who are uh, eternally secure, once saved, always saved, mess up see save people fall but save people do not fall away i have seen save people fall and fall hard i myself 
have fallen and fallen hard. But the just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But see, the wicked falleth into mischief. Okay? All right? And you got to be careful with that. Because that's one of the main tenets of people arguing against once saved, always saved. That someone who is once saved, always saved, couldn't do these things. That's not true. All things are lawful for you, but all things are not expedient. Remember, this walk with the Lord is not one of that you've got a gun pointed at your head, forcing you to do what's right. You've got to make the right choices. And see, you got people who speak against eternal security because they see those of the church of the living God messing up. And we do. We fall. But we don't fall away. We fall seven times and get up again. But see, like it says, excuse me, in 1 John chapter 2, this is the falling away. This is the falling away. Verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come to be against and to replace. To be against and to replace, just like feminism. Are you saying that feminism is Antichrist? <laughs> yeah. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That's the falling away. Not saved people who get messed up. And see, these people who are against eternal security, see... Saved people messing up. And they say, well, see, once saved, always saved can't be true. That guy, that guy made a sin horribly, and he's, he, he's going to go to heaven. Yes, he is. Yes, she is. If they're actually saved, one can convert to the living God. Because you have to make the right choices. We can fall. Oh, we can fall. I've done it myself. And get messed up horribly. And continue. And continue. Until you reach a point where it's like, it's hopeless. But see, if you never reach a point where you say, well, therefore I still have hope. If you've never reached that point of hopelessness before. Then you really need to whether ask the question, are you truly saved? But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And what is that unction of the Holy One? The Holy Ghost, who will lead you, guide you into all truth, spirit of truth. As time is progressing, brethren, we are seeing this more and more and more. And I'll tell you what, uh, it's, it's like frigid out there. It's, it's only eight degrees by us right now. In seeing this, of how bad it's getting and how pronounced it's getting, oh, you have to be on your guard. And you have to guard your house. You have to guard your house and not allow any portals, windows, doors for devils to creep in. So, and you as men, and we as men, we have to remember not it's not being this drill sergeant and take physical actions no for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but let's go to that that's second corinthians okay let's go to that second corinthians second corinthians what is that eight brother second corinth not first corinthians 2 Corinthians. Uh, well, one second, I gotta find this. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 
verses 1 on to verse 6. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. To avenge all disobedience. You're messing up. And you're going to be brought along that way. Huh? That way of chastisement. Hopefully you'll soon be brought to that place of repentance. Where you will obey what the Lord has said. And revenge all disobedience. We got to remember, brethren. Brothers, our weapons are not carnal. You answer it with scripture. And if for a time that's not working, okay, okay, pray and fast. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this um, helps some of you. Like I said, there. Um, this was just a more of us going over some of the stuff that we have already talked about. Um, there will be links for you in the description box to consider these things. And um, like I said, hopefully this will help some of you. Maybe, hopefully, that's the hope. Thank you for your prayers. We need your prayers right now. We need your prayers. And we need to pray for you. You need to pray for each other. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your help. Thank you to all of you. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video.